Omnigen is a model for unified image generation. What does that even mean? Well, let's take a look at their overview for some more information. As we know, existing image generation models often require loading several additional models, such as a control net, IP adapter, etc., and pre-processing steps, such as face detection, pose estimation, in order to generate the specific image you want. With Omnigen, they believe that the future of image generation should be more flexible and simple. That is, generating various images directly through arbitrarily multimodal instructions without the need for additional plugins and operations similar to how GPT works in language generation. Okay, that's a lot of stuff, but in other words, it's like it's got various control nets and preprocessors built into it with you being able to access those features without downloading any extra models and you can just use English. That, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so let's have a look at some pictures that will explain everything, I think, a whole lot better. There we go. If we scroll down, they've got lots of things there. What can Omnigen do? So let's take a look at this picture zoomed in a bit. Right, so it starts up in the top left here and we've got a fairly standard looking prompt. A young woman sits on a sofa holding a book. She's got delicate silver hoop earrings, a cozy cream sweater. Uh, there's a blue mug and tasteful art and flowers. Okay, that's what it's generated. But then we've got a new prompt here. Remove the woman's earrings, replace the coffee cup with a clear glass filled with sparkling iced cola. And that's what it's done. It's removed her earrings and that blue mug has now turned into some cola. It's also got another option here. Detect the skeleton of the human in this image. So there it's detected the skeleton and then generated a new photo using that pose. That's pretty good. And also down here we've got if the woman is thirsty, what should she take? Find it in the image and highlight it in blue. So there it's gone. Oh, that's a cola. I'm going to highlight that in blue. If we scroll down, there's even more things too. So here it's adding one image to another. So following the pose of the image, generate a new photo. So it does that photo, but then it adds the middle person from that image into that photo in order to generate the final one. Wow, that is a lot of things. Okay, so what if you want to play with this for yourself on your own computer at home? Well, you could just go ahead and install it using the instructions on their GitHub page, but because I'm lazy, I went ahead and used the Comfy UI option instead. The first thing is to make sure your Comfy UI environment is up to date. If you haven't updated Comfy UI and all its dependencies within all the last few days, then now is a great time to get to it. Astonishingly enough, you can use Comfy UI Manager to install the Omnigen custom nodes as well. So custom node manager, let's open that up. And in the search box at the top, you can pop in the word Omnigen. Now you'll see a bunch of different options. As of right now, there are four of them. The one I'm using is this one, Comfy UI Omnigen. As you can see, it's the only one I've got installed. And that's from 1038 Lab. Why am I using that one instead of any of the others? Was there a particular reason? Well, I like their documentation and the note automatically downloads everything it needs. All of that seems like it requires minimal effort on my part, which can only be a good thing, right? After you've installed the node, don't forget to restart Comfy UI and your web browser so that you'll be able to use your new custom node. Here it is then, it's just a single node, but you can use it in so many ways. As mentioned, the first time you use the custom node, it will automatically download the model from Hugging Face. And the model is about 15 and a half gig, so that could take some time to complete. If you do want to download the files yourself, that's also an option, and you'll need to download those into ComfyUI Models LLM Omnigen V1. This is what my models LLM Omnigen V1 directory looks like after the automatic download, which is certainly the easiest option. As you can see, there's quite a few files there. On to actually using the node then. And for this first example, I've given it an image to work with. If you look closely at the prompt, you should also notice the keyword image underscore one. 
You can use up to three different images and also any of the example formats they provide there to reference those images. As you can see, even though I've chosen a rather quirky face, it has still done a fairly decent job of putting them in robes whilst sitting on a rock. There are a lot of settings there in the Omnigen node, but thankfully we have some nice documentation. Things like the prompt, steps and guidance scale are just as normal, but there is also an image guidance scale and a maximum input image size, the output dimensions and also some memory optimization options. Over on the original GitHub page for Omnigen, they have some resource requirement information. Now, when I use the offload model option in the node in Comfy UI, however, that seemed to use even less and just 4.5 gig of VRAM. Uh, it did take a long time, of course, about twice as long as normal, which would be about five minutes. Still, if you haven't got very much VRAM, it's certainly an option. As for even more hints and tips, here is a quick fire summary. Smaller images will generate faster, so that's an option. If the image appears oversaturated, try reducing the guidance scale a little bit. However, if the image doesn't match the prompt, then you may wish to try increasing the guidance scale instead. Generally speaking, a more detailed prompt will lead to better results. If you generate an image by Omnigen and then want to edit it, you should use a different seed in the second Omnigen node. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. For image editing tasks, place the image tag before the editing instruction rather than afterwards. And if you're using a control net style task, use the same height and width for the output and input. So you can see what all of that looks like. I've got lots of examples. So here I've got a different one where I've changed the number of steps. This time it's 35. As you can see, it's still a fairly reasonable image, but certainly not as good quality. Down at 20 steps, it's a complete fail. So personally, I would recommend sticking with that 50 steps. Scrolling down even more, I'm changing the image guidance scale. So that one has an image guidance scale of one, and that one's got an image guidance scale of two. Is there any difference between the two? A little bit, a little bit, but not so much. So there they are together. Image guidance one at the top, image guidance two at the bottom. Trying some more things then and here, I'm asking it to change the background. As you can see, the result is fairly good, but I don't think it's quite as good as the demo images they provided. There are a few changes such as round the watch and these baubles and the ring and the eyeballs as well. So that's all different from the original image, even though I asked it only to change the background. I guess it may be possible to get better results, but with it taking, well, about one and a half minutes for each image, that's not something everyone is going to want to do each time. For non-human characters and outfits, it seems sort of okay. Now, this time I'm not feeding it an image. I'm getting Omnigen to generate an image for me. So there is a majestic rodent warrior created by Omnigen and also an Omnigen created kitten. So there, I've got image two, that's going into image two, that's image one, it's putting the rodent and the kitten together in the single image, and it's it's kind of the same. He's sort of got a similar outfit. The cape is the same, got a little belt, but now he's got this green jerkin where he didn't have a green jerkin before, and the, the hairstyle is reasonably similar, but the face, tiny bit cat-like, there is a bit of cat bias going on there. Also, I feel it's a bit saturated as well, even though the guidance scale is down at 2.0. You don't need a preprocessor, but I'm using one here anyway to show that you can just pass in those pose images. Here, I've asked for a Viking in that pose, which it has sort of done. It hasn't followed the rest of the prompt where I asked for horns on his helmet, but hey. No preprocessor this time, and instead I'm using the text prompt to say it should follow the depth map of the image to guide its generation. Once again, I think the overall quality is fairly average, though it has followed the prompt reasonably well. Could do with a bit more destruction and devastation in there. 
Putting two or three people into an image is something it does fairly well. And for this example, I'm also changing the style as well. Like I did with the rodent and the kitten, I'm getting Omnigen to generate the images. So there I've got a hipster dude with a beard, and there I've got a woman with curly hair. For combining those two into a single image, I've asked it to do an anime style illustration of those two people in a luxury coffee shop. Overall, I think it's done fairly well. It's got his glasses, it's got his beard, the hairstyle is pretty similar. It's got her dark lipstick, so yeah, all right, not bad. Switching style to a more photographic one once more. Here is their example of putting two different people into one image. To me, they do indeed look fairly similar to their reference images. So now you have a way to create two consistent characters in any scene you like. Is it worth the wait? Well, that's up to you. Maybe, but the image quality isn't up to scratch and the images are too small. Okay, in that case, how about some upscaling and adding a little detail demon for those extra details? That is super easy to do with something like Ultimate Upscale and Flux or SDXL, pick a model of your choice. So here I've got the same thing. I've got those two characters, they're in their coffee bar, but then I'm passing the output of that image over into this ultimate SD upscale node. Now remember, I've got the node names on, so you can see at the top there if they have the built-in Fox icon or the custom node name, making it really easy to see where everything came from. Okay, so we've got our characters here having coffee as usual, and we've fed that image in. We've got a nice upscale, I think, going on there. CFG of one, because I'm using flux here, a denoise of 0.17, so really quite low. And I'm also using the multiply sigmas there, which you probably hopefully remember from last week's detailed demon video, giving us a little bit more extra detail. How much better is it? Well, I've got a comparison node here, making it even easier to see. So there is the original low resolution image. As I move this across, hopefully you should see a little bit more detail coming in, certainly on the denim jacket there and across over on his face and beard and ears and suit and all that sort of thing as well. As it's such a low denoise, the faces haven't changed too much, but then we do also still have those original artifacts such as the interesting looking fingers, something you'll want to vary on a case by case basis. But overall, I think it's a fun way to generate some images, even if it is a little slow. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 